Now, of course, being an enforcer, I cannot resist taking two slides to tell you and what is now your part when we go for CLP uh, control. And the message is prepare yourself. Actually, you need not to prepare extra because the regulator was already thinking of you when putting the law in place because you have a documentation duty. In the CLP regulation, it's Article 49. You have to document every information that is relevant so that you can show how you arrived with your classification and labeling of the product, be it a mixture or a substance. So we do not ask extra. We just come and see whether you have the, your documentation there. So this means you should keep information on the composition of your products. Impurities can be very relevant, substance identities. We want you to show to us the information that you received from your suppliers, respectively also the information about your suppliers so that we can approach them in case something is not matching. And that you keep the data that was relevant for your classification the rationale behind your classification, for example, of the mixture. And nowadays you need M factors, you need ATEs, you need test results, uh, so quite something that you have to present to us. Of course, a very important point is that you can explain to us how you arrived at the classification of a mixture or of a substance with constituents. We want to understand how did you arrive with the label that is on the product. You should keep a copy of the label and of the safety data sheet and the versions of it. You know, there is 10 years time span where you have to keep the information. And more modernly speaking, also your compliance with the online sale provisions is interesting to us. How do these offers look like? How did they look like five years ago. What about advertisements that you place in the online market? How do we do as an inspector with these online sales? There is definitely one element where we go more in an approach with focused actions, where we address the sales in the online format. And here you have the advantage that you can organize for a division of tasks between several entities in the enforcement authorities. You avoid duplications and you can make use of a kind of specialization. The task one is, of course, this investigation task. Where are these irregularities uh, which you are interested in? And this is, of course, screening marketplaces, screening the internet. These tools where you need to be a little bit an expert so then you, that you in an effective way, find those irregularities. And then there is the task two, where you really follow up in an enforcement perspective, and you do this with the identified responsible duty holders. So th this is a little bit the, the traditional aspect then, where you really have a duty holder and you uh, somehow confront the duty holder with the irregularities, and you try to find out whether this is actually a non-compliance in the end. The checks cover, of course, the products themselves, the offers, because we have rules how these offers have to look like, the presentation, the obligatory information, and when you do advertising, you know, an advertising is something like not linked to a purchase option, and an offer is linked to a purchase option option. Yeah? So the advertising, you also have to have the proper information there for the product. Mm -hmm. Besides this uh, focused action, uh, there is definitely also an element where you do your checks of online sale in an approach similar to the physical trade. And this is something you do on a routine level. When you visit a duty holder, when you do an inspection there, you always ask this duty holder, and what about your activity in the online format? And then you are already there. Then you do your routine actions. So there is 
not that much difference uh, in the approach you take and in the questions that you raise there uh, compared to checking physical trait. Of course, what is there in addition? You want to understand how the offers is in the online uh, format and how these advertisings are in the online format. What are the new details that will be in future? And, and Henrik mentioned already REF 13, where we will have in the forum then also the focus on the online sales again. The new rules of the Digital Service Act, uh, marketplaces, liability of marketplaces are extremely important there. Then we have additional liability obligations in the new general product safety regulation. They will come in, for, in place in uh, December 2024. And then we have already a very helpful interpretation that becomes visible in the CLP revision, a process which is not yet finished. It's in the trilogue of the co-legislators. But we find there that there is a concept to require that there is always a U-based supplier in each supply chain, even if the supply chain starts outside the EU. So a direct import from a non-EU supplier, for example, to a consumer, will no more be possible. Because we want a responsibility established in the European market. Yeah. That, that's somehow the concept that becomes visible. What are the procedures that we now can take as enforcement authorities when we work together with customs? to check the imports of chemicals. It can be stipulated by the customs, which ask the NEAs when they find a case of an import, a consignment, where they have suspicions with the compliance with the chemicals legislation. That's the first approach. The NEAs can define a profile with risky products or risky importers, and the customs will then, according to this profile, hand over the identified cases that match this profile to the NEAs for a follow-up. Companies that repeatedly have shown not to comply, for example. Then there is also customs laboratories or Sometimes customer also uses external laboratories where the product is sent by the customs authorities to this lab and the result from this laboratory investigation directly can be used by the customs to conclude on the compliance. Just think about the restriction. You find cadmium, cadmium is not allowed, so the product cannot enter into the internal market. We can do joint actions that both the customs inspector, the customs officer, and the National Enforcement Authority is physically out and checks the consignments. And you jointly select the shipments which you find interesting, and it's then on the National Enforcement Authority to, to follow up. And then there are two remaining approaches where it's more on data exchange between customs and the enforcement authorities. All these import data from the import declaration, of course, can be also used in tabular format. And an enforcement authority can investigate this data and do a kind of follow-up. Of course, the products are already in the market because the uh, customs procedure is finished when such products are listed in this uh, uh, customs uh, list of, from customs authorities of consignments that have finished the procedure. But still, it's an interesting source of inspiration for an NEA. And the last um, approach is uh, that uh, case by case, if the customs find some irregularities, they put together a set of uh, information pieces and hand it then to the national enforcement authorities to assess the compliance.
So you see, we have quite some tools. I intentionally went here a little bit into the details. Depending on the case, uh, we can choose the most appropriate cooperation format uh, to work together with the customers' authorities based on these rules in the market surveillance regulation. What needs to be improved from the perspective of, of an inspector? Definitely, there is the EU customs code and the reformation of this code a key point. We have to focus more on product compliance and not only on the taxation. There is a huge exercise going on with improving the exchange of data. This is all done under the market surveillance regulation. So the exchange of data that is available with customs authorities, but also, for example, risk profiles which we enforcement authorities create. There is discussion that there are ob additional obligations to present documents uh, for which evidence the product compliance in the course of the customs declaration, for example, in the TARIC, um, and reach restrictions, reach authorizations partially are already included in these procedures. And an important point is that sooner or later we need here the full digitalization, customs declarations, the documents that come in in addition. One key word is the digital product passport, something in Europe uh, hotly debated, but also already concretely proposed how to be implemented. I just mentioned detergents. Thank you for your attention.